everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Show Me How It's Done. I am your host, Lauren Urbonis, and I'm a Canadian demonstrator, so if you need anything and you're here in Canada, don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to get you a catalog or help you with any of the product that you see on the videos today. So what I want to show you today is how to make an adorable flower pot card using the Happiness Abounds Suite. So this suite can be found in our 2022 to 2023 annual catalog and it doubles as a little gift card holder. So it's a great thing for you to make up if you're looking for a little thank you gift for a special someone in your life. Or I know Mother's Day has passed a while ago, but that's okay. You can always save this idea and maybe replicate it for that occasion in the future. So if you would like to follow along with me, I'll give you all the measurements as we go, but I will also have them listed in the description on the video. So you're more than welcome to just come back and complete this card at your own pace whenever you'd like. So highlighting a couple things for you before we start the happiness abound stamp set i'm using this mostly just to add a little bit of fancy flowering on my card um, i'm not doing any sentiments because i wanted to leave this wide open for any occasion but the big thing that we're picking out of this bundle right now is these dies okay so the happiness um hues of happiness paper is stunning it comes in all different colors and shades but some of the pieces sorry they're kind of chopped up some of the pieces come with full size gloves and the dies the blooming happiness dies from this set they coordinate directly with them. Pardon my missing pieces. I'm doing a um, another card with this for my class this month. So I wanted to, uh, to have those mounted and ready to go. And if you're looking for more ideas of what to do with this bundle, I featured it at my June all day retreat. So if you go back on my Instagram or my Facebook page, you'll see lots of project ideas featuring um, this bundle. So all of these little guys here, except for these two, I think those are for kind of some individual flowers, which are not on the pages I'm using. All of these coordinate with different parts of this sheet so that basically what you can do is you can roll it through your cut and emboss machine and have perfectly done flowers without you having to do any stamping or shading and it's just so easy to do so I hope that you have played with these if you haven't already okay let's get going so we're gonna start with our flower pot base so you need a piece of rich razzleberry cardstock if you want to copy me I have cut this at four and one quarter by eight and a half and we put a score mark in the middle here at four and a quarter so that when I fold this up it's a perfect square with my fold line on the bottom. Now, this part is completely optional, but if you want to add this kind of greenery look, I used, I'm gonna show you in the catalog because it's hard to see on white embossing folders, the Elegant Eucalyptus Embossing Folder, so this guy here, and I just rolled it through once to give myself a really nice section of leaves that look like they're just kind of falling from the edge of my pot. And then speaking of embossing folders, I have decorated also the top of this pot, just so you know, and I used the stripes and splatters embossing folder, this stripes one right there. So if we're speaking of that right now, I might as well give you the measurement for that guy as well. And that is going to be one inch by four and a half embossed with stripes and splatters. So now we're just gonna pause a minute and do a little shaping of our pot because it's not really nice to have a super square pot. We want it to have this kind of angled look right here. So grab yourself a ruler and a little pencil and you're going to take your ruler, making sure your folded edge is kind of facing towards you. This is the one that we're going to do our work on. I'm going to make a little tick mark three quarters of an inch from the edge on this side. So you can see that just right there. Then I'm gonna move this over and I'm gonna make another tick mark 
three quarters of an inch. Ooh, moving things. There we go. From the edge on the right hand side as well. So hopefully you can see there's one here and one here. Now, if you want, you could certainly take your ruler and put a little, like put the ruler on that mark and on the top corner that it is adjacent to and draw a line. But I find sometimes you miss a little bit of that penciling and then you're gonna have to sit here in a race. So let's grab our trimmers and we're just gonna do our cutting right now. So I have this Dampen trimmer which is fantastic because it has all the measurements I need along the top. And I can just open this little flap. So it doesn't matter which side you start with. We're basically gonna trim off this little excess kind of triangle piece. So make sure that your little tick and the coordinating corner are somehow lined up in this cutting groove. Okay, so that your blade hits both the top cutting corner and then comes down at an angle and hits your little tick mark, okay? So go ahead and slice that. You are cutting through two pieces, so be a little heavy handed. If it didn't go through the first time, don't stress, just keep everything in place and go through once more, and that will cut this little piece off. So in essence, we've kind of just chopped off the corner of our square to give us a nice angle for our, our little rectangle. Then flip it around. Again, it didn't matter which one you did first, but once again, I have my tick mark and my coordinating corner. I'll move that up so you can see. Lined up in the cutting groove. Make sure they're in line, and then you can go ahead and cut. And maybe go back and forth a couple times just to make sure you do get that piece off. So what you should have now is a cute little pot that opens like this, okay? So we have lots more to do. Let's keep going. So we cut this little um, flower pot piece already, and that's just gonna be the ridge of your pot. It is a little longer than the pot top because we want it overflowing and kind of looking like a really nice ceramic pot. So my suggestion is just put some adhesive right along the top of your pot on here and then you'll know that it fits okay so i'm using double-sided tape which i kind of do suggest because we've done so much embossing you really want to make sure you've got something that works in the um little nooks and crannies of this but if you have seal or seal plus those are also nice and strong too or you can use glue so take off your backings and then this piece, you're going to kind of eyeball and make sure you've got a little bit overhanging on the left and a little bit overhanging on the right. Okay? They don't have to be entirely perfect, but you are making sure to line up the top of your rectangle piece and the top of your pot. You want that to be nice and flush so that when you attach this, it looks like it's just one piece intending um, to kind of just go over but we didn't do any fancy cutting we just put two pieces on okay so here is your pot itself now we have to do a little bit of work inside the pot okay so i'm going to open this up and chat with you about the inside pieces um, for a second but before you do that and you can kind of see i did this weird kind of like tuck in thing with my ribbon gonna this was my sample it's gonna be way easier if you just do this for now grab some gingham ribbon I took about 20 inches because I wanted enough for a bow as well so I'm just gonna start work at um, the one end and I'm just gonna put tape across the bottom of the front here leaving myself just the tiniest bit of overhang to tuck under that card in the back. Okay, so there's my little gingham. Now you can open this up and we're gonna put a little bit of tape right across this line here. And it doesn't matter if it goes all the way across because this card is going to cover that up. 
and uh, whatever you don't use for your ribbon, you'll just end up using for the card, okay? So there's one, and then just give this guy a little snip because you don't want to use it all. You need lots for your ribbon too. You only need about an inch tucked under before the paper will take over. Okay, so there we go. That's tucked now. So you don't have this weird diagonal line like I do. Okay, little tag here. So you're gonna do some cutting for me. The first piece I have cut is in Melon Mambo and I'm cutting that two and five eighths by five and a half. Then we've got a layer of Rich Razzleberry. This is two and a half by five and three eighths. And one piece of white that is two and one quarter by five and one eighth. I know those are all very weird measurements. They are listed for you in the description. So before you attach all of these, I would suggest doing some stamping just in case you mess up, then you can always turn it over. So Melon Mambo ink pad, we're just going to lift straight up. And if you want, you can kind of slide it in place to close. Tap, tap, tap on that really juicy ink pad. And just do a little stamp in the bottom corner. Tap, tap, tap. And in the opposite corner. Like so. All right, we're gonna do more stamping on another piece. So keep that stamp handy and you don't have to clean it yet, but you can start attaching pieces now together. So once again, any sort of flat adhesive will do. I'm using the double-sided tape, but you're more than welcome to use anything you're comfortable with. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my Rich Razzleberry. Give this white piece a chance to just dry for a couple seconds. And I'm going to mount that on top of the pink melon mambo. Okay. And now this should be dry, so go ahead and attach this. And that one will have a little bit more of a border than the Rich Razzleberry and the uh, Melon Mambo did. I wanted them to look a little differently. Okay, so now, whoops, <laughs> I put this down on that adhesive that I have. There we go. Now we're going to put adhesive all on the back of this pink. Typically, I would tell you, you want to put it on the flower pot because you have pink hanging over and you don't want adhesive on it. However, we do because we're putting flowers on there. Okay, so it doesn't really matter if you have adhesive. You can, um, you can either put it all on this pink area or if you choose, you can always um, do it separately. But I'm just gonna save a little time. Put it all across here. You're gonna want lots because those flowers need a place to grip. So either three, maybe even four stripes. This is way more than I usually do, but you want those flowers to have a little adhesive to land on. Right, and four, okay. So now I'm putting this piece just along the edge of that folded line, right there, my score line, just slightly up from it. You don't want it resting on top because then it will end up being folded into it, but just kind of slightly right along it and gently tap this down. Don't press it really hard because we want to tuck a few flowers in there. Okay, so let's do that. We've got a little bit of space here. I've cut myself three large flowers and three small flowers, okay? And that's gonna give you plenty to work with. You can also cut out some of that greenery if you want, and of course you can cut out different colors too. But however you wanna attach this, just start with one of the flowers kind of up in the top here, and then you can add little flowers as you go. There will be a few pieces of empty pink space, 
and that is okay. You can either fill them in with scraps from other flowers, or before you attach this, you can always just trim off a few of these little pieces down here. Nobody's gonna know they're hiding under there. And then all you can do, is you just tuck that in behind your flower, you can trim it. Maybe you only need one little petal showing through. And it'll look like you've just got another flower kind of hidden back there. So I didn't press my pink down too hard. So I can do the same thing with that one. This is why I kind of like just seeing what's here before I fully commit. But there we go. Now I can press that down. And we can add a little bit of pink. Of course, there are partial flowers and scraps once you start chopping up that paper. So if you prefer to use one of those, you go right ahead. I just, I've been using this paper quite a bit for different events. So I'm kind of on my last few pieces of available space. There, so it just looks nice just to kind of tuck some of those straps in the back, it layers them. And then for these pieces here, um, the easiest thing once again is just put a little adhesive across the middle and it will give your flowers something to attach to. So I started with the one in the center and then from there, I just went with the opposite color of large flower. two. But of course, you do this however you want. You could pop these out on dimensionals if you wanted. You can tuck little green pieces in there too. Completely up to you. If you'd like to decorate the front, we have a little bit of our gingham ribbon left. So you just make yourself a tiny little bow. And then I'm attaching this with glue dots just because that is, I think, the easiest way to attach ribbons of any sort, but you can also use Tombow liquid glue and just give it some time to dry. So once you're happy with your ribbon, make sure you give those ends just a tiny little trim. I like to cut them at a little angle, kind of away from the bow. And then the glue dot is easy because all I do is I just take my bow and I put this on the roll, press it in there, and when I pick up, there's a little dot of glue. Okay, and that will just go right on the edge here. There we go. Ooh. I don't know about you, they, uh, they started putting the dots on the tail, I call this part the tail, rather than on the roll, and it's kind of driving me nuts. <laughs> I might, like, Re unwind this and just start it over. It's not stamping up, it's whoever actually makes glue dots because we don't have our own brand. Okay, so here is the flower pot card as so. Just kind of opens, you can write a little note. Now, if you'd like to turn this into a gift card, I will give you the rest of the measurements for that. So you just need a little piece of Melon Mambo. We're cutting this wide and then we're going to trim it afterwards to fit. Okay? So this is going to be one and a half by four and a half and we're going to stamp on it first. So bring back that um, Melon Mambo ink pad and give yourself a scrap paper because we're going to stamp in a messy stamping sort of way where you're just kind of going all over this piece in different ways so that you've got flowers all over it. Call this messy stamping. There's no rhyme or reason. You're just picking spots and sticking to it. Okay. There you go. So you've done the whole thing. Now, to make this into a gift card holder, we are not going to put adhesive all over the back of this pink piece. Instead, we're just going to put a little bit around the perimeter, pardon me, of our flower pot, okay? So if I put it straight along the bottom 
And then just a teeny tiny little piece up the sides, like so. This, if you can imagine, leaves me the empty space to slide a gift card into because we don't have any adhesive in here. It's not running into anything, okay? So it can just simply slide into that space and rest comfortably. So take off your backings and just line up the bottom of your pink piece with the bottom of your flower pot. And what you'll have is something overlaying like this. You'll have lots of excess. So just flip it over and trim those two pieces off. One. And two. Okay. And then just to make sure it works, stick your gift card in and it will fit perfectly in this little space. Well, there we go. Super fun and super pretty. I hope that you guys enjoy it. I know that you'll probably have to give this to somebody very special in your life. And uh, depending on how predominant you want your flowers, like this yellow one is very out there. Can always, just realizing that, can always fix it. Tuck him in a little tiny bit more. Just by lifting those two up. There we go. That's probably a little nicer. There. And if you want, you can just kind of curl the edges of your flowers up with your fingers. Or if you have a bone folder handy, you can do that. And it will look like your flowers are kind of coming out of the pot a little bit in a 3D way. But there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. I had so much fun making it and I just had to share. I know you're all excited about the holiday catalog, but it's still summer. We have to enjoy the weather. So I hope you have a wonderful week and I hope that you enjoy some sun and uh, some time with your family or friends. See you guys later. Bye.